Hey guys, it's just Demo here, and uh, I know a lot of you may not know, especially because of the videos that I do make, but uh, I actually work day to day uh, in I the world of IT, so basically I fix computers all day, every day. Um, it's something I really like doing, it's a challenge, and I, I enjoy doing that, just like I enjoy, enjoy doing all the, the projects around my property, and working on the Jeep, and building a cabin, and all that good stuff, so... Um, with that, I've had a lot of people kind of ask me, what's the best laptop, specifically laptops, um, for basically schooling? Um, and it made me have a really good idea as far as what I should do video-wise, and Breezy helped out with this. But basically, this video is going to be over laptop suggestions. So I've kind of got this broke down into categories, and in the description, I'm actually going to write all this out as well. So, if you don't want to watch the video, you can go down there and basically make sure you hit all these check marks and you'll have an awesome computer. So, first off, we're going to start with brand. So, basically, always choose something that you know. Don't go with some off-brand just because you think it's a way better deal or it's cheaper because, in all honesty, those are probably going to die within a year or two. And when they die, you do not want to have all your data left on them. Uh, and lose all of it. So another thing to remember is quality over quantity always. Um, so one of the brands that a lot of people know of is HP and they have some cheap laptops like $200, $180, $250. Uh, but just be aware because they they make a lot of them and they sell a lot of them. Well they make a lot and sell a lot because they're so cheaply made that they normally end up crashing out or dying and two or three years and you're at this point you're really wanting a laptop that's going to last you and not be super slow in the future um, another thing with HP and that kind of goes into my next uh, basically topic here is um, HP's really have a lot of bloatware if you don't know what bloatware is it's basically just a bunch of software downloaded onto the machine that'll boot up and it actually causes it to slow down and may cause problems in the future um, so you might be asking, what do I recommend then? I really like Dell or Lenovo products. Lenovo being number one, Dell being number two. I've always had good luck with those um, products and they're pretty reputable. Um, on this same topic, I do not know a bunch about Mac or Chromebooks, but I know Macs are really hard to work on if you don't know what you're doing and there's a big learning curve with those and also Chromebooks I personally think are garbage I hate them I can't stand them um, they're hard to work on they're hard to navigate uh, if you went to school and you like them you can get them but I think they're junk I don't think they'll last very long so next major part we are going actually into the hardware of the machine so there's not much you can do motherboard wise with laptops but one thing you could look into if you care is try to see if the RAM, the RAM also known as memory, is soldered to the motherboard or not. Because if it is, you won't ever be able to do future upgrades like add more RAM or anything in the future. Um, and then also see what you have for options as far as um, what hard drives can go in there. So I, the ideal setup would be to have a hard drive and then have an SSD in there. A lot of the times that would happen by an M2 slot. I know I'm kind of getting in detail here. That's kind of not the point of this video, but if you see an M2 slot, you can always put an SSD in those and have a hard drive, which would be awesome for future because it'll feel super fast and you'll have a lot more storage. And I'll get more in depth as we go down this list. So our next major topic, RAM or memory, like I just said. So this is basically everything that's going on on the machine at one time is using your RAM um, to basically remember what's going on. It's basically like the hard drive. What the hard drive does is saves all your data for when your computer's turned off and your memory uses all your data when the computer's turned on. And it's a lot faster. Um, never get any less than four gigs of RAM. I don't care if that's so soldered on the motherboard, motherboard or not, but do not do not get less than four gigs. 
try to get eight gigs of RAM because as uh, as we go to the future, um, stuff like Google Chrome and everything else is really starting to use a lot of memory. So that's basically going back to the motherboard. If you get one that's not one that does not have soldered uh, memory on it, you'll actually be able to upgrade and add more if you can only afford four gigs of, at a time. But like I said, try to go for eight. If you can only get four gigs of memory, uh, that's fine. See if you can add in the future, like I said, um, because if you do just get four gigs and you can add in the future, you can always add eight or f another four gig stick, which would make eight, and that'll be an awesome upgrade. And then if you can, this is another in-depth feature. Always look and see if it is DDR4 RAM, DDR3 RAM, or DDR2. DDR2 is junk. You should never be buying something in this day and age that has DDR2. Uh, DDR3 is kind of older. DDR4 is the new version. Uh, DDR3, a lot of people still use. It's cheaper. It's not bad. It's just you got to make sure if you are going to do upgrades in the future or pay somebody to do upgrades like me um, that you kind of know what's going on there. And this is arguably the most important part. If you did not pay attention to motherboard brand RAM, pay attention right now. Um, so basically, you can get a hard drive or you can get an SSD. Uh, these are what stores your information. Back in the day, hard drives is all you could have. SSDs came along and they were super expensive. But now, SSDs have dropped in price a bunch. So yes, a hard drive will still be cheaper. But the way a hard drive works is it's actually like a record player and it has a little arm and that arm has to spin around this disc and find the information. It's basically the only mechanical part left in a computer besides the fans and the keyboard if you're using a laptop. So that will be the number one thing to fail on computers. Uh, if you get an SSD, they use, uh, it's basically magnetic so the read and write times are way faster so it feels like you're using a very fast machine when you are but at the same time you're getting the same amount of space or storage um, like i said most people aren't going to fill up an ssd or a hard drive so when it comes to a 250 gig ssd unless you plan on putting a bunch of pictures and using it for personal use don't worry about it Get an SSD over a hard drive because it will feel a lot faster for a lot longer time. Um, if you have to get a hard drive because they're cheaper, you want to get one that spins at 7200 RPMs. Uh, these are all things you can look through in the description because 5400 is slower, so obviously it takes longer to uh, read and write your data, so it feels a lot slower. Um, like I said, SSDs are magnetic and it's hard to fail. Um, they feel super fast unless you get them absolutely full. If they're full, they will feel just as slow as a hard drive. You don't want to fill up an SSD. Because of their only one downside is um, they can only read and write so many times. But that is nothing that a normal person should worry about because they can actually read and write three terabytes of data. Okay, now we got all that crazy stuff out of the way. Uh, we're on to the processor. So this is the second most important part. So if you're getting Intel, so it'll be like an i3, an i5, or an i7, never, ever, ever get an i3, a Pentium, or uh, uh, I forget how to pronounce it. Uh, it's Sirion, I think, or whatever. Um, but if you see it, it starts with a C. Um, don't don't get those processors. They are old and they're not very good. They're very slow. Try to get at least an i5. Um, and by at least, uh, a lot of our computers at work use i5s and they're fast and they run just fine. My personal computer actually has an i5 in it. But if you can, try to get an i7 because they are faster. Um, and then I'm not really an AMD guy, so if you are getting some type of AMD rig, uh, I can't really help you out there because I'm not sure about those. If you want to know and you want me to look it up, go ahead and comment down below and I will do some research about that. And last but not least, 
um, the screen. So a lot of people don't notice this or care about it, but a lot of people want a touch screen. Well, it's really not worth it. Uh, the amount of times you will actually use that touch screen, especially for schoolwork, isn't worth it. Um, they cost more, uh, they have a higher failure rate, and uh, to me, like I said, they're just not worth it. Um, and lastly, the size of the laptop. If you can deal with a 13 inch, obviously uh, they're smaller, but you can get just as much as you can with a 15 inch and a 13 inch. Um, so the bigger you get, you know, 15 versus 13 versus 17, a 17 inch computer is normally going to be a beast and cost a lot of money. A lot of people like 15 inches because of their size. And if you can deal with a 13 inch, that's probably going to be your best value if you paid attention to everything that I had on this list. So if you do have any questions, uh, definitely leave comments and I'll be answering those. Um, if you have any laptops that you find um, and you want my opinion on them, go ahead and link them down in the description below and I will tell you what I think about them. And uh, I'll try to have a couple down there that I really like. Um, just and if you want help just uh, comment basically you, how much you're willing to spend or how much you're able to spend and I will try to find the best laptop for you just let me know what you guys think and thanks for watching the video make sure to like and subscribe and share to all your friends that are going back to school